The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Pai repouni a honoka sauhila. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss. Uh, <coughs> back again with uh, more of Coele O Pacifici. And <coughs> as I mentioned in the first video, where you should you should definitely watch that first. So pause now and jump back to that other video. But I do describe how this is a song from Tonga, from written by the Queen, and you know, sort of comparing the different islands around the Pacific Ocean and how Tonga is the best when she comes home and sort of realizes that. So um, it's a really lovely song, and it was recorded by the uh, New Zealand Symphony Orchestra with Signature Choir, as you just heard a little bit there at the beginning of this video. And uh, it's just really lovely stuff, and I, I enjoyed working on it so much. And, and they just really are terrific musicians, and they gave everything to it. It just, they're, the choir, I mean, it's just a different, it's a different kind of um, state of mind than being like a, a concert musician, but it is no less dedicated because I've been to some of their uh, their rehearsals and they're amazing. They just, I, you know, we could learn something. <laughs> you know, the concert world could learn something from the way that those rehearsals were done and just how much dedication and, you know, and love and, and respect, uh, you know, that, that everybody was, uh, was applying to the job of learning these songs, which, you know, actually can be pretty complicated in terms of the harmony and the rhythm and everything else. So, as I mentioned before, this is a Faikava song, so it's got a like a shuffle beat, and it's, you know, it can very easily break into reggae, but I kept the reggae out of it and sort of kept it more of a kind of a folksy shuffle. Uh, however, uh, and I should mention that the, the, the choir... Um, arrangements were done by the choir right by their their um their leader helen tupai and her cousin jodra tupai and possibly some others so um so uh, the way that they arranged it the choir starts off and does the first couple of verses and choruses and then they have they had a a duo come in here, uh, alto and baritone, and just so beautifully done. Um, the the singers were just superb. Um, and then there will be like a solo <laughs> that kind of helps to wrap up the entire thing. That will be our third lecture. So um, my first lecture, I had just intended it to be 10 minutes long, but we ended up talking about a bunch of different things. So this one will maybe may end up being shorter than 10 minutes. I don't know, but let's just see how we go. This is all being done just as I'm about to get on the airplane to go back to California to look after my sick mother. So, you know, it's just really down to the wire. Uh, not that I feel rushed or anything. I just feel really blissful because it's such a great experience, um, you know, to be putting together educational materials for you and, and, you know, everybody else out there who needs them. Okay, so everything just sort of goes to a nice, you know, ba ba but stop. Right, just a totally dead stop. Notice I've put in commas here. You know, it's a pausa, so it's just like it's like a lift almost. It's you know, it could almost be even in the rhythm of the piece. Um, but it, it works really good with the poco ritardando. The conductor may actually even be applying a little bit of like pulling back on the beat even a little bit by the time they give their they indicate the beat for um, for the second note or the second beat of the bar before they indicate the tact, right? Um, so here we've got um, what I fear feels fairly simple. Uh, oboes in thirds, doing a little descending pattern with the, with the, it doubled by violins. And we've got the clarinet here, 
um, doubled with viola, but really all you're going to hear once their part becomes more prominent is the first horn coming in here, right? But I'm still leaving the clarinet and the viola there for cushioning uh, to the horn part. This is really, really important. If I didn't have that in there, the horn part would be very naked, right? And it just, it would have a different quality, not the one that I want. So this, uh, the the change of harmony was also dictated by the uh, by the choir, but they didn't. I don't think that they indicated four bars. They just, you know, they they were just going to go from here to there. So I put this in as a really nice break to kind of um, ease, like to change the mood for the listener and for the players, right? So they just really get prepared. So they're not just going boom right into you know the pickup to the, you know, to the downbeat of the next bar, right? So like that, a lot of, as I mentioned in the first, um, in the first chapter, um, a lot of Polynesian choir songs start with like a few pickup notes going to the downbeat. And you know, like da, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Um, now with this one, I, uh, you'll notice that there might be some eighth notes which could be sung uh, with swing or not, right? But I'm really staying away from a lot of eighth notes. You know, there there are some as as the you know as we kind of get into more of a shuffle into the chorus and so on. But uh, you know, for the beginning, I'm just really keeping everything just really four four time right on the beat, and like very few, uh, very few if any kind of eighth notes. So it just really makes everything seem super smooth, and I think kind of after the very jolly jostling around of the Faikava beat and the previous two verses and choruses, it really provides a nice break of in the energy. <clears throat> so so here you'll see quite a simple strategy, I feel. Like I let the the singers come in all by themselves, like no accompaniment at all. But then when we get to the downbeat, I throw in Ba a base, basically a, a simplified version of what they're singing an octave higher. In a situation like this where it's more delicate and more soloistic, what this achieves is it keeps the strings out of the way of the singers. So you can really hear their vocals clearly, but they can hear the strings above, which help them keep in tune, right? So it's very devious. It's sort of, um, and then and that way I can score these patterns which sort of walk all over the pitches that the soloists or the duo singers are are singing and it does not interfere with their ability to find their place in the music at all right so <clears throat> i feel this is just really just dead simple this sort of you know ba -da -dee -da -dee. it's such a yeah you know, almost a cliche um but this is your know, bassoon and cello working together um, with the violas coming in as the notes rise up into their register, and then just pizzicato in the uh, in the double basses. Notice mezzo piano sostenuto. I'm giving nice longer pitches, you know, just and and this is a. <laughs> I always get asked this question in the group, so in the Facebook group, so yeah. So that's this is how you want to. You don't want to do it the opposite way. You don't want to do oh parentheses the lower note that you might not be able to play, and then the, this is the definite one. You you always do parentheses the note that you would have them play if they can't hit the note you want, right? So just always do it this way. All right, well this low D flat here. So you know simple enough if you've got a five string bass or a or a C extension. All right, so. Um, all right, so I mean, I, I feel it's all kind of very lovely and smooth. When we get to the next, like the um, the the second part of the verse, um, I go even higher, all right? So I've got flute and oboe, first flute and flute, first oboe working together uh, in tandem, doubling with the uh, first and second violins. And what this does uh, by taking it so much higher, I'm able to, to take the I'm able to take the body dee da dee thing and just like really explore it and have it climb up you know like look how high it gets in the in the uh, horn and viola once again you'll hear the horn more than the viola but the viola will just add a little bit of cushioning to it okay which which i want now notice 
the since since I am kind of elevating the feeling of where this kind of da dee da dee, even though it doesn't really elevate it exactly, but it you know I'm I'm going to climb higher and higher. Since I'm I'm kind of taking it into horn and viola, mostly, I don't really need the cello anymore. So the cello and double bass are now going to play octaves together. Okay, I feel very effectively, and they are going to be doubled by tuba and bass clarinet, right? And that is just like, once again, I am emulating the sense of uh, that, that's that warm cushioning pluck that you get from a, an electric bass. No, I mean, that's not too uncommon. It's not, you know, like Ravel would, would orchestrate his piano music and other composers' piano music, and he would be trying to find ways to emulate the sound of a piano, right? So I think once he had like, like, um, uh, enharmonic, they had, had an enharmonic unison on harp, for instance, you know, uh, along with, was it clarinet or some other kind of thing? So yeah, so it's, so that has the right sound. Okay, so now we're getting to the to the chorus, and it's you know it's got that same da 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 ba 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 da 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 da. So um, so here I just have not I just have not added any percussion, right? You know I just really want it to all be in the orchestra. So here I've got what similar is pretty much what the trumpets were doing before in the previous video. You should go watch that first. So we've got this you know. I've got all all my reeds here except for the bassoons going ta 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 right, and I've got the uh, horns going ba 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 da 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 right, um, yeah and and uh, the once again <laughs> the violins have kind of dropped back down an octave and they're they are doubling in a kind of a simplified well it's you know it's it's simplified when when the when the singers start to do the the swing stuff, I kind of try to stay away from that, except for just you know one or two avoid unavoidable notes like the C natural here, and then here you know like here they've got the the kind of swing syllables here. I just simplify that to a quarter note, but then there's kind of no way that I can get around doubling from above, except for to go da 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 da, da right. Okay, that and you know and uh, so the the horns as they become more prominent here, you know, really just kind of help to, to firm up this kind of boink, 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 boink thing, right? But since they've got the, they also have the offbeat as part of their portato uh, articulation here. So it gives that uh, 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 kind of dragging sort of feeling, which works really, really great with swing, by the way, guys. So, um, so yeah, so, um, yeah, and, you know, just like not too different from from strategies from before. Uh, Tunito, staccato, bass trombone, or tuba, and you know we, we still have our pizzicato, lower strings, and so on. So it, like it, I feel it all works together because it's just very simply orchestrated. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So now I'm kind of just I'm just repeating my trick from before. Uh, when I go back to the qua to the excuse me back to the like the verse part of the chorus right remember our choruses are like our our structure is verse you know a double verse and then a chorus followed by material like the chorus is like this almost bridging stuff followed by another verse uh, another single uh, verse so yeah so notice I'm just making it richer here so I've got the you know, I've got um, harmonization from trumpets and trombones, really soft and in the background. Um, I'm continuing on with uh, bass clarinet and tuba going you know, staccato uh, combined with uh, pizzicato, sostenuto, uh, lower strings. And we, I still have that ya da 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 do di di di. It's kind of, I'm sort of doing a, almost a bit of an echoing pattern now with um, with my uh oboe and clarinet and uh with the middle strings right in here and then just really letting the first violins and flutes work together so putting it all together i feel it just you know it 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 provides enough variation of 
timbral quality, sort of progressing the texture, right? That's something that you always want to think about if you have simple music like this. How can you progress the texture in ways that keep it interesting, right? And uh, keep the listener on board with the music and they're not just saying, oh, now we're going back to this again. Ho-hum, right? So I'll tell you what, um, I will play back this all the way up to this, you know, this new part, this kind of intro to the next part. And you will you can have a listen to that and then stick around for part three when we go to this heroic tenor solo. And wow, this tenor, it just, this is like our um, <laughs> Carmina Burana moment. He just has, just had the most powerful voice. He's just so, and he was just such a great guy too. Just really fun to work with. So yeah, so um, have a listen to our little middle section here, uh, the two verses in the chorus with our duo singers. And I will see you in the next video, I hope. All right. Si pe, 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 si pe